I've become very interested in the GM issue because I've either met or read about a number of farmers who are extremely worried. Some farmers, some organic farmers, have had their, their crops contaminated by pollen from genetically modified crops in a nearby field, sometimes blown by the wind, sometimes it's when bees carry the pollen on their work to pollinate the, the different crops. And also farmers who have had their fields almost taken over by uh, super weeds, and these are weeds, agricultural weeds, that have become resistant to Roundup Ready, which is the most frequently used herbicide. And uh, one farmer said that this was the biggest threat to farming that he could remember in his lifetime, because some of these weeds, like this a pigweed that usually grows about this high, it's now up to seven foot, and it has huge, huge stems that will even destroy machinery when they're trying to harvest the crop. And so, you know, in all of these ways, this issue is a really important one. I've, I've read reviews of the different experiments carried out mostly on the poor old laboratory rat uh, of the effects of genetically modified food. They're fairly short, three months is all that's required. And when these tests are evaluated, depending on who conducted the tests, one set of tests showed, oh, very minor health problems which really we can brush under the carpet. Those were carried out by people from the industry. Then there's another series which are carried out also on rats by independent scientists who find similar results but say that these are very worrying and that they couldn't say that this, uh, that this um, food was, was safe because it wasn't safe, because there were particularly effects on the liver and the kidneys. I spent many, many years learning about chimpanzees, who are more like us than any other living creature, and that's in their biology, uh, also their behavior. And yet the big difference is the explosive development of our intellect. So the anatomy of the chimp and human brain is virtually identical, but ours is bigger. And I think without question we're the most intellectual creature that's ever walked on planet Earth. I mean, we've designed a rocket that goes up to the red planet Mars hundreds of thousands of miles away and releases a robot that's crawling around on Mars and sending back photos to Earth. And how is it possible then that this most intellectual creature is destroying its only home? It's very clear from the pictures from Mars that's not a good alternative for us. And when I look at a small child, and I meet them every day, and think how we've harmed this planet since I was their age, I feel deeply ashamed of my own species, and I feel angry. This is why I'm traveling 300 days a year. This is why I'm devoting so much of my life to our youth program, Roots and Shoots, which is all about giving young people hope so that they will roll up their sleeves and take action to make the world a better place, working on what they're passionate about, to help people, to help animals, to help the environment.